Well, before we get started, I would like to ask you guys to please give me a like. It really helps my channel and it will push me to make more videos. So let's try to get this video to 100 likes. What's going on, guys? It's Investing Hustler here. And today I have Kevin from Cyberworld7 with me today. How's it going, Kevin? Good. Uh, subscribe if you haven't yet. We appreciate every uh, subscriber that subscribes to us because we like to grow. Every subscriber is important to us. Yes. So today we have like a different kind of video for you guys. Usually we have top three best stocks to buy for the next month. But since we might be potentially entering a bear market, today we're going to have top three worst stocks to invest in for the month of December. So top three worst stocks. So these are stocks that you do not want to be invested in. Or at least we think that the uh, because we're in a bear market, we're thinking that the stock will decline, uh, and we're just doing a fun prediction video of you know how, how correct we are, and we'll come back to this video uh, next month on December nineteenth to see how how accurate the prediction is mm -hmm. for our top three worst stocks. So we could easily release this video, and then next thing you know, the markets go green, and we have a Santa Claus rally. And we are completely wrong. And these top three worst stocks turn into the best stocks. But for now, we're going we're gonna to start off with the top three worst stocks that we think are the worst stocks to invest in. If these stocks do drop to a certain point, it might, ha it might create a good buying opportunity. But as of right now, we think that these stocks might continue to decline. So, um, Kevin, why don't you start off with one of your companies? Okay, so are you going to pull up the chart, uh, the chart for Apple? Basically, I honestly believe that Apple, you know, in one year, Apple has gone up all the way to $200 because of the problems of production, like how, you know, they can't manufacture, like they've been cutting back on the iPhone's uh, production. Mm -hmm. It's horrible because like first Tim Cook comes on and say no more iPhone and iPads and everything else numbers. We're just going to give you revenue and income. And, and then after that, they go and they cut like production of the cell phone. Uh, I believe that because of that, even War Mr. Warren Buffett cannot save the stock from declining. At least I, that's what I believe. I believe that this stock's heading back to 160. At 160, I would definitely be a buyer. I would still be cautious, but I would definitely be a buyer at 160 because the stock pays dividends and it's a great company. And long term, I think it will, the stock will probably recover, especially when iPhone 5G comes out. I think that's gonna be the new super cycles for iPhones. And then my next stock is Aurora. I do, unless we have some kind of Christmas rally, I do believe I can, we, I will, we will see Aurora in the low five US dollars, possibly going below four, uh, five to the 4.7, 4.8. U.S. dollars. I don't think it'll, get, it'll hit the lowest at 410, but you know, anything is possible in the market, I guess. So that's what I believe is going to happen. I think this stock's going to decline over the coming, mo uh, coming months, unless some kind of good news comes out that rallies the stock back to maybe eight, nine, ten dollars. At least this is my opinion. I could, you know, I could be totally wrong. Yeah, and we then, never know. These, these companies could push forward, but as of now, it does look like we're in a bear market and these companies will continue to decline. Yeah. And I might get some hate for, uh, for Aurora Cannabis because, sure. uh, you know, there's a lot of people that like this company and they don't want to hear the stock go, going down. So. No, everyone loves Aurora. Yeah. And then your third company would be? AMD. Why? Because AMD, I think AMD is going down to fifteen dollars. I think it's going to get a reevaluation because Nvidia has gone through such a correction that I believe that AMD has to have that correction too. So I think AMD is going down to fifteen dollars. Nvidia might go down to a hundred dollars. If it does, I'll definitely be a buy. I still think uh, Nvidia is a good company, but I think AMD is going to follow Nvidia. I think AMD is going to go down to. 15 possibly ten dollars yep. it's depending on how bad nvidia crashes so we'll, we'll see this is my prediction so i think amd could go to 15 dollars even possibly to the ten dollar level so we'll see what happens though but at, at the ten dollar level i'll be a big buyer like i i can see amd's like future and i see very prosperous so that's why I'm very bullish on AMD long term, but short term, anything's good, anything's possible. I think AMD can go to ten dollars because Nvidia has just had such a big correction, and AMD is kind of connected to Nvidia. 
So, okay, that's my top three worst stocks. Uh, what's yours now? Well, first, I do want to say that I, I kind of agree with AMD. I could see it going to 14 to $12 in the short term because that did seem to be their um, their support and their from the past. But, yeah, I definitely do agree with AMD. And um, so my top three st top worst stocks would be one of them is Apple. And just from looking at these charts, I could see Apple going back down to $160 level, maybe even um, the $150 level, but we'll have to see. But I do think that Tim Cook decided not to release because you did talk about how they, they are no, no longer going to tell you the sales of iPhones and iPads or individual things. They're just going to give you numbers pretty much, right? That's what you yeah, said. Yeah, just revenue numbers and income. Yeah. And like they'll be have they'll have like hardware and then maybe service and then something else. They won't give you the individual numbers of how much iPhones they sold or how many Macs they sold. Just just like hardware sales. That's it. Yeah. Well, I do think they're doing that mostly because the Apple is more than just um an iPhone. They, no, they're they're, they're hiding their numbers. Yeah. They, they well, don't they, want they don't want bad bad uh, press release. That's what I believe. I well, believe that one of their earnings in the past. They they did really they had really good earnings, but their iPhone sales were not what was expected. So maybe because of that, they're they're deciding not to release specific numbers because they might have one section that's doing really well, like their services, and then they might have one that's slowly declining, like their iPhones. So that might be why they're they're hiding their numbers. Um, but I do still think Apple will continue to grow. And they're becoming more than just an iPhone and Apple, like uh, a computer company. They sell everything. They sell all sorts of gadgets. I, I pretty much own everything Apple. So, um, but yeah, but I do think in the short term, they could go to 160, 150. And I will be buying some Apple if that's the case. And I'm sure Warren Buffett will be doing it too. Uh, another company would be Cron. And the reason why I don't like Cron, right? Because I used to be invested into Cron. Actually, not too long ago, I sold off all my Cron shares. Um, I'm going to pull up the chart. It was in this recent spike here where it went up. I sold it at 11.52, and today Cron is at $10.95, and this is a uh, Canadian prices. And the reason why I pretty much sold off all my shares, which I never do, usually I just sell a percentage of my, of my shares, but that's because I, I lost faith in this company after the horrible earnings. I think they had... Um, I forget the exact numbers. It was like 3 million gross revenue and they had a market cap of like over 2 billion at the time or close to 2 billion. So I just think Cron is just way overvalued and they just, they just don't seem to be growing like all the other companies like Aurora and Canopy. And so I just, I lost complete faith in Cron. So I sold off all my shares and I could see Cron going, let's pull up the, the six month chart. Cause and Cron isn't even close to their uh, 52 week low, but that's that's very low. I don't think it'll go close to 380, but I could see Cron going down to the seven dollar range, um, to around seven dollars, maybe even lower. But I do see Cron hitting seven dollars, and then maybe there I'll be able to I'll be comfortable enough to start a position with them again. But for now, I, I'm I completely sold all my Cron shares. I'm no longer with Cron, and my last one. Um, even though I believe in this company and I think it's a really good company and this company has a lot of potential in the future and this company has grown. Can, so hold on. Can I, can you go back to Cron? Yeah, I could go back to Cron. What's up? I just want to, I no, I uh, like you. I just want to add that Andrew left said that this stock would be, this stock deserves to be $3 and 50 cents. So uh, like, honestly, I've done a lot of research on Cron. Yep. Well, I tried to do a lot of research in Cron, and I don't understand the company. They, they, they're not very transparent. Yep. Uh, they're kind of all over the place. And uh, like it just, in my, I can't put the, the connections together, and I can't see what the hell this company really does besides grow weed. And at a very low scale, too. Yeah, so I just, I don't get why they're so overvalued. I don't get it. Uh, Maybe because they're an international company, but Wayland is also an international company. This company doesn't even advertise that they're a low cost producer. All they do is like, I don't know. I, I don't get this company at all. I, if it goes to $3.50, I'd definitely pick up just for fun because yeah. it, it might go up again. But besides that, I'm, I'm honestly would stay away. I honestly would just stay away from this company, even if it went back to like $7. I would yeah. buy something like Afria where I'm more comfortable investing in a company I know versus a company that I just you know don't understand at all. 
Well, if it did go down to 350, that would be its 52 week low. And um, yeah, that would be a very nice price to pick up some Quran. I would only pick them up at $7 because I feel like they'll start hitting a support at that point and I could do a nice little swing trade at $7. Yeah, I, I understand. I understand you. Long term with Quran. Like, I don't I, them long term. I understand what you're thinking, but I'm saying that isn't there like a better, like, let's say if Kron does hit that $7 level, wouldn't yeah. there be another investment that would be a better use of your money versus Kron? Like, let's say Afria or, you know, maybe even Canopy. Uh, weapon Canopy goes at $36. Canopy oh, yeah, would for be a sure, sure. company that put your money in then will Kron because Kron, like, I don't understand it. <laughs> Well, I made some money off Crown. I made about a thousand dollars. I've done a few swing trades with them, and I sold everything off. So, yeah. Uh, but I do know what you mean. But I've been swing trading with almost all these. Oh, companies. Okay, now we'll. I guess we can go to Microsoft. Yeah. So my next company, and it's simply just by looking at these charts right here, Microsoft has has not had has pretty much been bullish for the past. Let's see how many years. Uh, in the past five years, Microsoft has been bullish. Um, right now, when you look at Microsoft's 52-week range, they, were, they are nowhere near their 52-week low. When you compare that to a company like Apple, where actually it's almost the same thing. Apple's not in, in their 52-week low, but Microsoft, I feel like they might be dropping, they might have potential to drop to 80 to $86, $85. Um, I do like Microsoft. There's nothing wrong with this company, but if this bearish market does continue, then I could see Microsoft declining to $80. Um, I don't think it'll go any less than 80, but at 80 at that point, I think it's, it's definitely a bargain right now. Microsoft has a PE ratio of 25 and a market cap of 831 billion. But yeah, I could, I could definitely see this company declining, not because there's anything wrong with it, but just because the market will drag it down with it. And recently it, it hasn't really got beat up that much. It went from um, from a 52-week high of 116, and right now they're sitting at 104. So it's it's not that bad. So Microsoft has not really gotten beat up, and we might see Microsoft decline if this bear market continues. So yeah, that's those are my top three. So we both agreed on Apple. Mine was okay, Microsoft. Hold on. I, I want to add a little bit to Microsoft. When yeah. I first went into the market about a year, maybe two years later, I bought, I would never buy Microsoft at like $22. No. <laughs> so five times your money. No, I could have five times my money. I'm just saying that like for me to see like this stock at a hundred dollars when I used to buy it at $22, yep. it's just, I, I can't, I can't mentally buy it. It just wouldn't make any sense. If the stock dropped back down to maybe like $50. Yeah. Maybe I'll dip my toes into the water, but like I just can't like look at that run. This is like bleh, like no, there's no the company hasn't dramatically changed that much within that that time frame. At least I I think I, I'm not hundred percent positive in within the five year time frame from 2013 to 2018. Yeah. I don't think the company has fundamentally has changed that much. I could be wrong. I actually never followed the numbers. Yeah. But you know I don't think they deserve. To what they are right now, in my opinion, I would not touch a stock at a hundred and four dollars. Yeah, well, if it did drop down to fifty, it would go to its twenty. It would go back to numbers that it had at twenty in twenty sixteen. Yeah, would be a crazy bargain. I don't see it going as low as fifty, but it could be. It could oh, because we could be in a correction right oh, now. If it if it's that bad, if it gets ugly, uh, I guess I won't be surprised then. But um. I think this like at eighty dollars, I, I could start a position with them, and then if it continues to. Well, what's the market cap on uh, Microsoft? You know. Eight hundred and thirty-one billion. Okay, what's the market cap on Apple? Probably nine hundred. Let's see, nine hundred and eighteen billion. <clears throat> you honestly believe that uh, Microsoft deserves the same, very similar market cap to Apple? In uh, your honest opinion. I don't, I don't think so. But then again, yeah, Microsoft is everywhere. They have Xbox, they have computers, they have like... Software. Apple sells phones. Everybody needs a phone. Microsoft does not sell phone. Microsoft is a software company. Yeah. 
Microsoft, they're like the pioneers, though. That's that's probably why. They've been around for a while. They've been around since 1986. I get it. But if you look at the revenue number, you look at the profit, Apple is a better investment than Microsoft. So Microsoft right now is in the overinflated area. At least this is my opinion. Just because it, the, Apple had such a correction and Microsoft didn't. Yeah, that, that's... Microsoft the- should have a correction like Apple. Because of that correction, because not too long ago, two weeks ago, Apple was sitting over $1 billion. Man, if I had my margin account, I would, sh- I would put a, a short on Microsoft, just because I believe it's going to have a correction soon. So instead of, instead of titling this video, top three worst stocks, maybe we should say top three stocks to short. But that, or I don't know, that no, might be just, too No, awful. no, 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 top three worst stocks. <laughs> top three and, worst stocks. Uh, Well, anyways, that's it for now, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned a thing or two from this video. And once again, just because we said these are the top three worst stocks does not mean you should go and short these stocks. At any given point, the market can have, um, can turn around and it can go, we can go back into a bull market. Uh, For now, everything's unpredictable. We're not 100% sure. We made this video for entertainment and for educational purposes. So if you enjoyed this, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, hit that notification bell and smash that subscribe button. Don't forget to subscribe to Cyberworld. I'll leave the link in the description and don't forget to subscribe to me. Um, That's it for now, guys. Bye-bye.